ethical hacking. Find exploits in your web application before the bad guys do. As a web developer, there are 10 common security risks that you'll want to be aware of. Things like database injection, broken authentication, and cross-site scripting. Hackers have been exploiting these vulnerabilities from day zero. Like back in 05, when cross-site scripting was used to update your MySpace page with Sammy is my hero. Or just last year, when the Chinese version of Twitter Weibo exposed over 500 million user accounts because of a brute force attack on their authentication system. You can reduce your chances of being a victim by running penetration tests on your web application. I refuse to be a victim. And a popular free tool for doing so is the Burp Suite. Whenever you visit a website, the browser automatically makes requests to a bunch of servers for the HTML images and JavaScript that that site needs to run. The Burp Suite is like a man in the middle that can eavesdrop on or intercept every single request. On its dashboard, we can find the proxy tab, then open an instance of the Chromium browser, then visit a website that's given us permission to run penetration testing. The tool will intercept every request, allowing us to inspect it and optionally modify its values before it gets sent to the server. This is kind of like casing the joint to find potential requests to exploit. For example, you might submit a form to complete a shopping cart order. If you change the order amount on the post request and their server-side validation is weak, you may have just received a five-finger discount. But in real life, hacking is rarely that simple. It takes a lot of tedious trial and error. Luckily, you can automate your brute force attacks with the intruder tool. You might have a bunch of username-password combinations that get added to a request dynamically, then sent to the server with a variety of different attack types. All you have to do is click the Start Attack button, then sit back and wait for a successful response. Once you've gained access, you can use those same credentials to determine if you you can maintain access to extract sensitive data from the target. If you had permission to do this, you wear a white hat. If you didn't have permission but notified the target, you wear a gray hat. And if you're selling the data for Dogecoin on the dark web, then you wear a black hat. This has been Ethical Hacking on the Web in 100 seconds, but stay tuned because today I've invited Bartos from the Web Security Academy to take us beyond 100 seconds and level up our skills on web security. Hello Internet, Bartosz from Web Security Academy here and I'm super happy that we partner with Fireship again. Several days ago Jeff posted a video about course, cross-origin resource sharing and in today's video I would like to give you an insight into why we need course in the first place. We will take a look at same origin policy which is the fundamental principle of web security model. We will start with the theory and explanation of important concepts followed by coding labs so that you can see the mechanics of this policy in practice. Let's get started. In order to understand same origin policy, let's first understand the concept of origin. When you take the triple of scheme, domain, port, this is what constitutes to origin. First three examples, when we have HTTPS, the domain, Web Security Academy, and here the port is implicit because when you use HTTPS, the default port for this is 443. The default port for HTTP is port 80. So when you have the same scheme, the same domain and the same port, regardless of the path, it is considered to be the same origin. If you have a different subdomain or a different port or a different scheme, these are all different origins. Why is this so important to differentiate those origins? Let's jump to the next slide. So the same origin policy creates some kind of secure context for your websites running in the browser. So imagine that you have site a.com, which will consider our origin a, and the browser fetches this website from the server. And then we have origin B that is hosted on site B.com. So imagine that you fetch index.html, image JPEG, script.js, and inside of single tab, we have this secure context with JavaScript running, DOM, document object model, cookies, and web storage. And if this second origin is loaded in the different tab, they cannot communicate each other. They are isolated, but you can still fetch resources from the different origin. For example, you would be able to load images, CSS styles or scripts to enrich your website with resources from the different origin. And here is very important to note that this is the browser 
which enforces same origin policy. And as I told you, there's going to be some kind of secure context that is going to bind this origin and the execution of this website and scripts and everything related to this website in your browser. And this single website would not be allowed to communicate with different origins. So imagine that you load some website and you would like to communicate with side B. By default, same origin policy restrict this kind of communication. Because who said that they can trust each other? Maybe one website is evil and we would like to prevent this kind of communication. In order for this kind of communication, origin B must whitelist origin A, explicitly saying that origin A is trustworthy. Let's look at this example. We have a simple website which displays hello world, some image, it links to some style sheets and scripts. And also it has some simple inline scripts implemented to call APIs on different URLs. So to serve this application, we have a simple server, which is written in Node.js and utilizes Express.js library to serve our application. If we look here, we see that whenever there is a request to this URL, we are going to serve index.html. Whenever there is a request to this URL, we are going to execute some simulated logic, in this case, just a console log. And also we have a second application. Before we jump into the second application, let's note that this application is going to be served at port 8080. And the second application, which is called external because it's going to simulate our external origin, is going to be served on the different port. And here it's going to serve some static resources in the folder public. So we see it serves some image, script, and some style sheet. And also exposes API method for HTTP get to also simulate some logic in this case console log. So let's also look how we can run those two applications. npm run policies would start our first application. npm policies external would start our second application. As you remember, we are trying to see same origin policy in practice. We know that we can fetch external CSSs and scripts like this. So here you see that we are requesting our external origin, which we know by the port number here. They were successfully applied. Image was successfully loaded. Uh, if we go to style, we see that the port is different and everything actually works fine. We also know that same origin policy prevents some API executions. So here we have two buttons, call API and call external API. Let's look at the console to see that we have some message here. It says, I was fetched from external origin. This is a script that we can see here. There was no problem in importing a script from a different origin, our external origin, uh, that we see the port is 8081. So let's try to execute API method on our first origin. So looking back on our index HTML, we see whenever we click button call API, it's going to call our server, then get the response and display it in the console. So whenever I click here, console log success and also our server says that API was called. But different situation would be when we would try to call external API because now our API endpoint is living on the different origin. So if we click here, we see two things that happened. First of all, request actually hit the server because we see console log from the server that external API was called, but actual response was blocked 
on the browser because we know that same origin policy is enforced on the browser level. So now, because we didn't actually allow this origin to communicate with our website, the result is blocked. To recap, we were able to get style sheets, images and scripts to be executed on our website, but calling external API was prevented from reading the result, but internal API call was successful. If you liked how it was explained to you that we start with the theory and follow with coding labs, I encourage you to check out my web security fundamentals course that you can get right now with a 40% discount using the code that you see on the screen right now. During this concise one hour course, I will teach you the most important aspects of web security model from the theoretical and practical perspective so that you will never ever end up with course error again and you would know how to efficiently prevent cross-site scripting or at least minimize the risk of cross-site scripting to a negligible degree. See you in the course. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.